welcome to another one of my video tutorials. Tonight I'm going to show you how to animate materials on a plane. And it's a real simple setup and technique and you make some really funky stuff with it. So uh, I'm going to add a plane. I've got the, uh, well I thought I had it. <laughs> I thought I had the dynamic space bar. It's not working. There it goes. Okay. So we got our plane here right in the middle of the uh, grid. And you hit S to scale it up, make it uh, fairly big. Then you want to rotate Y, so you go R, Y, 90 degrees, and it does that. And we're going to move the plane back a little bit, elevate it, get it right on the bottom there. And I want to uh, reset my camera, so we're going to go Alt R, and that will have it pointing down with the Z axis pointing up. And I'm going to move it over a little bit here. We're going to go down to the uh, the top view. Ortho. We can go back. No, I'll go back. I'm going to move this up here to Y. And over this way. Uh, let's see. I want to rotate my camera. Well, first we'll rotate it in the Y and then we'll figure out the rest. We want our little uh, triangle there <coughs> facing up because that's the uh, up in the video camera. So we're going to rotate it in X90. Now we got our little, uh, see this little triangle here. And that tells you that the camera is facing up. So we're going to go back to top view. And our plane is somewhere in here. Over here. There it is. Right there. I think we're close enough to it. We'll move it up a little bit. We'll get this light here situated. And I want to switch to an area light. But I want to get it uh, directly behind the camera if I can. And on the same level as the camera. So we're going to change this to an area light. And uh, <coughs> we'll hit Alt R. Now we get it like we want it. Now we're going to rotate it Y90. And that put it right behind our camera. And we'll look at the top view real quick. Okay, we got it right behind the camera. And uh, something I decided to do when I was going to make this video, I'm going to parent the... Uh, let me get these things lined up. You know, kind of a perfectionist when it comes to this. I'm going to get that light right behind the camera. And uh, let me pull the light up a little bit. So anyway, if you want to parent an object to another object, you select the child first. So we have our uh, area light selected. And I'm going to make that area light uh, I'm going to scale it up. Oh, here it is. We have a size of one, and we're going to get get into cycles render. Yeah, I like cycles render. Now we got one. So our light's nice and big, and we're going to give us uh, 1,200 just to start with the strength of the light. Of course, it's a white light now. So anyway, I want to make this uh, this light a child of the camera, making the camera the parent. So shift, then we got them both selected. And then you go Control P, and you say Object. Now, if you look over here in your uh, outliner, <coughs> you notice the camera is in red, so it's the child of the camera, <coughs> which means let me deselect. If you uh, say if you rotate the camera, the uh, I'm rotate Y, the light should follow. So it does. So it's parented to the. Uh, the uh, light is parented to the camera. Okay. We're going to tilt it down a little bit. Now we're going to go hit 0 to go into our camera view. And we'll go back out for a minute. We'll bring it down just a little bit. So we can capture this full area. Well, actually, if we're going to animate these, uh, what we'll do, we'll actually have the camera facing straight on. So we'll rotate it Y again. I mean, you can hold down the control button to make it snap. Now, now we're looking straight at the plane, so we're going to have to come down again. 
GZ to grab and pull down on the x-axis constrained to the x-axis and I'm going to lock my camera to the view you hit N over here bring the toolbar up <coughs> and um, select lock camera to view so we're going to close in go back out here now I'm going to just look take another check here and so we got the camera looking right at the plane and we're going to select a plane let's see it in white over here in the outliner and I'm going to go up this little triangle and pull out another window and I'm going to go to the nodes editor right here and hit new so whenever you um, use the nodes here any object you select especially materials wise it assigns it a default flat white color called a diffuse BSDF and a material output. And these two nodes are linked showing that you know the white flat material is going to be the surface of the uh, of the plane. Okay. What we want to do, we want to get a little crazy here. And uh, I'm going to add a couple other nodes and we'll hook them together. And we're going to add a uh, color ramp, which is under converter. And we'll uh, slide this over, make a little room. <coughs> now we're going to add a wave texture. We'll put it right there. And then we're going to add texture coordinates, which will generate our colors. So we're going to switch over here. And you hit, and you're over here in your uh, left pane. Hit O. So we can, uh, we're going to go to render. So we just see white for now. Okay. So we had not got these nodes hooked up. We're going to hook this one to this one. And you hook the color to the color. And I got the wave texture, color to the FAC, which stands for factor. And then we're going to do generated to vector. So this is going to lock it in. So you see, looking at our color ramp here, we just got black and it's, it's going from white to black. And it's called a linear ramp. So that's not real exciting. So what you can do is you can uh, I'm going to change this black to another color. We're going to just make it red, all right. And then when you hit the add button, it will put another little dotted line right in the middle, indicating where you can place another ramp. So we're going to change that color. We're going to make this. Uh, we're just going to make it green, pure RGB green. So, all right, and then this end, we want to change this one. We're going to make this like a brown. And if you go down here, you can uh, let's bring down your hue a little bit. We'll make that a nice brown. And then we'll add one more, and it places a little dotted line right between well the last and the second position there. We're going to change that color to yellow. And you get yellow, you just go red and green and no blue. So that gives you a pure RGB yellow. Okay. So we we'll click out of that. Now, <coughs> so we got our plane and it's got the uh, wave, the bands, as they're called. And you can change this to rings or bands. But I'm just going to stick with bands for now. What we want to do is we want to keyframe this material that we got on our plane. We've got all our nodes hooked up. And I'm going to focus on uh, keyframing some of these uh, these uh, values here. So I got, I'm got i down here at frame 1 on my animation uh, timeline. And we're just going to do a distortion like so. And to keyframe that distortion on frame one of your animation toolbar, you just sit down on your keyboard and it makes it a keyframe. So now we're at frame one. We're going to move up to frame uh, 30. And we want to change, maybe we want to change two of these, you know, you never can tell. So we're going to scale up. We're actually going to scale down. Right there. And we'll keyframe the scale, hit I. And then we're going to change the distortion a little bit. We're going to go back like that and then hit I. Okay. So now on frame 30, we've changed it. Now we'll go to frame 60. 
and we'll uh, do something else here. We'll uh, we'll run the distortion up again and move the scale back in a negative, and then we'll just go uh huh and uh huh. That's the key point. Now we're going to go to 90, and we'll uh, keyframe something else. We'll keyframe three or four of them. Uh, we'll do the detail scale. We'll uh, keyframe that. And of course, you can peel back the distortion again. Uh -huh. Keyframe that. And go back up on the scale again. And then uh, keyframe that. So now we've got. Uh, you know, the first uh, first keyframe at one, frame one, second one at 30, third one at 60, and the last one at 90. So we only want a 90 minute, uh, 90 frame animation. We'll change the end down here to 90. So now we just got this one single animation at 90 frames. And if you uh, hit the play button here, you can see that mesmerizing, uh, freaky color effect. So that's that's it. That's pretty much it. And there's not much else I can tell you from there. I mean, uh, you know, once you get ready to render it, uh, what you can do. Uh, if you want to just render the individual frames, which is the recommended way of doing things. Uh, what I like to do here, I've got this, uh, this the uh, I've got the uh, preset at 1920 by 1080, which is like a 16 by 9. But I like to make uh, animated GIFs. So I've already got, I pre-assigned this thousand by a thousand. And of course, since your camera's locked to the view, you can, uh, yeah, you can drag this up and down, make sure there's nothing but the animation in the frame. So anyway, when you go to your render, I'm gonna go to my uh, GPU compute, no, render off my graphics card. And, uh, <coughs> You know, you uh, go down here and you can get this frame right. You can change your frame rate. And uh, you can do what I got to set is PNG and it'll, it'll, uh, it will uh, create 90 frames PNG with RGBA and A stands for alpha, which means because PNG has transparency, of course. <coughs> so that's the third time I've ran through this video. I've had trouble with the audio and the video syncing. So uh, I figured out how to fix that. And thanks for viewing, and uh, I look, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel, and, you know, just check once in a while, and I'll do, be doing some more Blender tutorials. So uh, thanks for watching.